Right, we're going, we've got two acts in this section. Hey. Ben Wardley's our first make some noise. Mike Wardley, Mike Wardley. Please welcome Mike Wardley. Hello. 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 Uh, so yeah, I'm Mike, I'm, I'm relatively new to comedy, so I still I kind of crave that, that feedback and that acceptance from my peers. Um, I had a gig last weekend, which I thought went really well until afterwards when I came off stage. One of the comedians came up to me and accused me of plagiarism. His words, not mine. <laughs> <laughs> I know what you're thinking. Shane Ward's had a tough pandemic. <laughs> I've tried different diets, I've lost weight, then I've gained it, and I've lost it, and I've gained it, and everyone's like, Mike, stop the diet, so what you need to do, you just need to eat clean, just eat clean, do the clean eating, so I thought, right, I'll try that. Has anyone done it? No. Unbelievable. <laughs> Last night I was in the shower with a kebab, get in! <laughs> Using garlic sauce like shower gel. <laughs> No, me and my wife, we argue a lot about how tight I am. Um, even tonight, before I've driven down to do this, we've had a massive argument about the quality of the, the crockery that we've got in the kitchen. So she stormed off upstairs like she does in the moon, slammed the door, and I thought, right, I'll show you. So I went in the kitchen and ripped all the paper plates in half. <laughs> now, I think the penny finally dropped about me being tight is when we had um, the snow earlier in the year. So there was me and my wife, my boys were in the garden having an amazing time, built a massive snowman. And then my eldest got a huge snowball and chucked it at me, but it missed and went over next door's fence. I sent him round to knock on and get it back. <laughs> <laughs> and I do all my shopping after nine o'clock on the night, you know, when all the yellow stickers come out. Yeah. Stuff that you don't even want, but it's that cheap that you've got to get it. It's like falafel bites. 48 pence, we'll have some of them. There's a packet of four yogurts. Two of them haven't got lids on, doesn't matter. 26 people will have them. <laughs> And especially if it was shit on the ring pole. It's 14 pence, put it in. <laughs> My kids think, whoops, he's a brand. <laughs> <laughs> when did it become acceptable for us as, as adults in society to start venting our anger and our frustration through singing? You know, when we go to the football? Like, I'm guilty of it. It's just for that 90 minutes every week, we lose all ability to have a normal conversation with somebody. So instead of just turning to your mate and saying, oh, the ref's having a shocker here, it's like, shit, refs! We always get shit, refs! Like spit flying everywhere and veins popping out. The football league's corrupt. The football league's corrupt. And now you got to believe us. And now you... Professional football's just a musical for the working class. <laughs> But imagine if we lived our day-to-day -day lives like that. It's like you come home from work and it's like dishes needs doing, washing needs spinning, you just want to sit down, relax and have a cup of tea. So you do, you make a brew and sit down. Then you get a text off your other half telling you that she's leaving work. And you're like, oh, she's coming on. She's coming on. She comes home, spots her dishes are still there. She's furious, bags go on the floor, throws her arms in the air. You haven't done the dishes. You haven't done the dishes. I'll clean when I want. I'll clean when I want. The kids are dressed as stewards in case it all kicks off. <laughs> it's, 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 nice, it's nice to be getting out and doing this again. Like the two main things I was looking forward to doing with the whole like government roadmap, getting out of lockdown and stuff was getting out, doing gigs, just seeing loads of friends, seeing loads of faces. <laughs> and then the second one is so I can get away from seeing people's man caves all over social media. Oh, I've got a man cave, you should see my man cave. Just because your wife bought a plaque out with home bargains for 199 and stuck it on the door of the spare room doesn't make it a cave. You're nearly 40, grow up. <laughs> oh, but mate, you should see it. I've got a fridge with beers in, I've got a dartboard, I've got a pier. Just call it what it is, it's a wank shack. <laughs> and who had a lockdown birthday? So loads of us must have. Is a shout got a lockdown birthday? <laughs> After, I, I, mine's in April, so I was locked down for both of mine. I think the only shining light I got from any of them was I got one of them quirky new birthday cards that you got to put in the microwave for two minutes before you could open them. I got one off my uncle Ben. <laughs> <laughs> I normally get a massive groan or a massive laugh at that point, so I'll take that one. <laughs> my best mate's dad used to say the best things in life are free, and he was a great man. A shit pimp. <laughs> Who was in from Hartlepool over here? Woo! It's the only place I've ever been where they sell fake Primark here. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> but, 
why can't girls ever take a compliment with clothing? Like, this conversation might have happened in this room, guaranteed tonight, or any workplaces, or whatever. This is two lads first in this conversation. That new top. Yeah, it is, yeah. It's nice. Cheers. And that's it. But girls, you always answer with the price. <laughs> and where you bought it from? <laughs> hey, I like your top. £16, River Island. <laughs> Was it? It's lush. They had loads. <laughs> I might get one. You should. A mouse saying you should. The rider saying do it, and I'll cut you. <laughs> but, <laughs> it's the only time you do that. You don't go around each other's house and then go, "Hey, God, your house is beautiful. Hundred ninety-nine thousand nine hundred fifty pounds, <laughs> Bellway." <laughs> um, I, I, I bought an Apple Watch during lockdown just to try and help. Obviously, I said I was trying to lose. <laughs> if you like that bit, you'll love what's coming. <laughs> Jesus. So, so I bought Apple Watch just because it obviously helps with your, like, your calories and your steps. I was trying to lose weight. And you get your calls and your texts and everything through it. And I loved it. 12 months later, bored of it. It just nags at you. It's like being in a second relationship. You can be sat working, you get dead excited. You feel a little vibration, you get a notification. Then you're getting a text. It's like, ding, breathe. <laughs> Managing, all right, breathe now. So, like, <laughs> <laughs> slow it down. <laughs> <laughs> you did it. Yes, get it, did it. <laughs> 20 minutes later, ding, stand. Oh, so, you stand up, move about, you start walking around the house. You're in the house by yourself, getting dictated to by a watch, like some chump. <laughs> chump, who says chump anymore? <laughs> we'll run with it, like some chump. You did it, like, yes, get in, did it again. And then it's really late on a night, about half eleven, you're really chilled, getting ready for bed or whatever. Ding. Yesterday you closed three activity rings. Today you've only closed one. Quarter to twelve. If you go for a brisk 26-minute walk, <laughs> you'll close another ring. You've just been telling me I don't know how to book and breathe or stand, and now I'm going for a midnight stroll. <laughs> Ding. Breathe. <laughs> Who else is fed up with social media influencers taking over the world as well? Yeah. Rocking. I, I, was, I was lying in bed next to my wife a couple of weeks ago and we were playing on our phones because we're married and we don't talk to each other. <laughs> and I always listen to a podcast or the radio or whatever and I take one out just in case she needs to moan, uh, talk about anything. <laughs> She's obsessed with Instagram and all I hear coming out of her phone is, so what you need to do is go out tomorrow and buy Zaflora. And I'm thinking, is she watching Transfer Deadline Day here? Who's this Zaflora? Is it like an Ivorian creative midfielder who I've never heard of? No, no, it's this little bottle of smelly shit. You need about 300 <laughs> bottles in the house any one time. Cleans the kitchen with it, cleans the bathrooms with it, dilutes it, use it as an air freshener. It's pointless me wearing aftershave anymore. I come downstairs on the morning, she's swan around the house like Maria von Trapp spraying this shit everywhere. <laughs> so ladies and gents, if there's a strong smell of honeysuckle and jasmine in the room tonight, <laughs> mixed in with a bit of garlic sauce, it's this guy. <laughs> And then Marie Kondo, is anyone familiar with her? Yeah. She's another blogger, vlogger, influencer. She's got her own Netflix series, and her mantra is, if it doesn't bring you joy, throw it out. <laughs> and my wife is furious to come home and find me shoving out a four-year-old in the green bin. <laughs> <laughs> His little head sticking out like that, wondering what's going, Dad, stop, stop! <laughs> I would have managed to shut the lid if I hadn't just thrown 216 bottles of Zaflora out. <laughs> Few. He's like, Mike, what are you doing? I said, well, he brings me no joy. He said, I know, it's the blue bin. <laughs> I'll leave you with this one. Um, so, Jeremy Kyle's rumoured to be returning to our screens. Um, <laughs> oh, Christ. <laughs> so, obviously, there was a Jeremy Kyle show. Um, happy for being on it, by the sounds of it, so you'll know that already. <laughs> you definitely are. <laughs> But there was a guest who, who tragically took his own life, so the producers and Jeremy and ITV and everybody sat down and quite rightly agreed to pull it off air. What I can't quite understand is how the well-being of guests wasn't really questioned before that point. <laughs> so you get Jeremy doing this piece to camera where he's doing like a plea for future guests. He's like, do you suffer from gambling addiction? Does your loved one spend all of his time in the bookies chasing that next win? If your life savings being blown on a dead cert on the Grand National is gambling, ruining your marriage, then we want to hear from you at the Jeremy Carl Show. Sponsored by FoxyBingo.com! <laughs> I'm off into my man cave, thank you very much, good night. Yeah.